Fortress cleared, vault opened, riches stashed away. Wait a second, why am I putting my loot into the vault rather than onto my ship? Because it's big brain time. Season 6 is out, the new forts are here, and we are all very excited. Excited for now, that is. Listen, I know a lot of people are saying that if the new fortresses end up staying as they are, they will go the way of the mermaid shrines and that everyone's gonna lose interest. But that is a smooth brain surface level understanding of the situation at hand, because with enough imagination, you can see the true potential behind those colossal stone buildings. Not just for roleplay, but so much more. Because my second in command Brandon and I didn't just clear a fort, and we didn't just claim it as our own, we used it as our base of operation and personal storage. And the idea kinda makes sense, right? If you sink with your loot on board, it's all gonna be ripe for the taking of whoever sunk you. But if your loot is safely stashed away in a vault, with a key that's nowhere to be found, and a bunch of phantoms defending it in your stead, that gives you a lot more time to protect it. So join us, ladies and gentlemen, as we set sail for our first voyage of season 6, aiming to make one such fortress our own. Welcome to the Sea of Tales. Despite what might be your natural instinct, the capturing of a fortress isn't actually all that difficult. There's a bunch of them distributed all across the sea, and all you gotta do is sail over there and tell its inhabitants to sod off. So long that those inhabitants are of the spooky variety. In our case, we actually found a brigantine already stationed, so naturally, Brandon and I had to evict the new owners. I wish I could tell you that our voyage immediately started with an epic encounter, but what we faced was a solo pirate on what is otherwise a three-man vessel. Which went about as well for him as you'd imagine. That fella had obviously been stacking forts and we were more than happy to reclaim the riches and put them back to where they belonged. Now, the fort that we intended to turn into a base of operation was actually the Royal Crest Fortress due to its more centralized location. But since we had arrived on this one anyway, we decided to spend the night emptying every cupboard as well as collecting all the supplies we could find. And boy howdy were there a lot of supplies. We left at the crack of dawn to fulfill our purpose with only a minimal amount of distractions along the way. Nighttime had struck again by the time we arrived at what was going to become our new home. But little did we we know that we weren't the only ones currently on the real estate market. That brigantine was far away enough for us to not see it as an immediate threat, so we went about moving into a new place to the tune of fireworks welcoming our arrival. While Brandon proceeded with the eviction process, I began unpacking our loot so that we could feel right at home. Even with us diverting our attention to two different tasks, we had no problem claiming the fort in no time at all, leading to the fateful opening of our new vault. Yeah, the loot isn't too crazy yet, but that's about to change. Multitasking was the name of the game, so while Brandon left for the nearest outpost, I was tasked with filling up that vault. Man, I know that loot stacks are always very satisfying to look at, but there's something about filling up a vault that just hits different. I took a short break from my organizing duties to murm back to Brandon, where we could raise a merchant emissary flag and begin loading up commodities to stash away. Now, it is worth mentioning that we legitimately weren't gone for more than a couple minutes, but the fort was already haunted yet again by the time we came back. While Brandon kept sailing to purchase more commodities at another outpost, I dropped off to clear the fortress one more time. And while I was doing so, our plan began to take shape. We could keep our loot safe inside the fort, go level up our emissary flag, and come back to pick up our riches when we were ready to sell. Then we would come back with a new emissary flag to sell the items belonging to each respective faction, rinse and repeat. At that point, Brandon hadn't actually gotten to see the vault yet because he was busy organizing more items for us to stuff into it. So when he came back with another delivery, the reaction was kind of priceless. Throwing it in the corner here into the pile. Jesus Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that oh great? Oh my god. Isn't that great? Is awesome. Content. <laughs> it was with a shit-eating grin that I watched over my ever-growing pile of loot. Nothing giving away the fact that we've been here doing any of this in the first place. The distance we had to cover to get pretty much anywhere that would allow us to add to our vaults was fairly short, meaning that we had an eye on our fortress pretty much all the time. And even if somebody was to go to the fort after we left, they'd have to defeat the phantoms first and spend a lot of manpower loading up the items onto their vessel, all of which takes time. After another go-round, we decided to sail a bit further away, so instead of opening the vault, we hit the key to make sure that our loot was safe. The phantoms shouldn't come back so long that we don't open the door, and an inactive fort with a locked gate should be of no interest to anyone sailing by, meaning our plan was foolproof. We acquired more and more commodities to add to the pile before heading over to another fortress to see if it was any different than the royal crest one that we had conquered. But besides being a wee bit more spooky, it was pretty much the same. So far, we've been having a fantastic day stacking loot up high without anybody being aware of what we're doing, and even if we got into a fight, that'd be sinking a vessel with very few riches on board. But things took a sharp turn when we pulled up to our home one final time. How close are we to home? Uh, very home is... Close. Home is active again. Yeah. There's a brig. At our fort. At our, at our home? At our home! Oh god. 
So much for a glorious plan. The Phantoms cared no bit about the doors being shut. They repopulated the fort as soon as we left anyway. That brigantine waited long enough for us to take a trip further away before they attacked the fort, and they were minutes away from getting their hands on our vault, unless we could stop them. But this time we had to fight a proper brigantine crew, a full squad that was watching ladders quick on the repairs and had no hesitation to try and sink us. Our man disadvantage became apparent when they started boarding us. It must be nice to be able to spare a crewmate even whilst being under fire. But Brandon and I knew that this was a matter of patience. We didn't have the skill to take on all three of them if only one of us boarded, and we didn't have the experience to outmaneuver and outgun them in naval battle. But what we did have was a fort. One that, while not very accurate, did do its part in putting pressure on our enemies. Our strategy was to play the resource game. Sure, we could have gone for a Hail Mary knowing that our loot was safe at the fort anyway, but if we give them a chance to loot the island for supplies, there's no way we would stand a chance when coming back. So I say into the fort's dead angle while they kept spinning, attracting the phantom's fire while we could save on our own cannonballs. Though of course, us being stationary was also a good opportunity for them to strike. They're setting the player? Yeah, I see him. You mean he's left. Uh, left? Yeah, he's on left. I'm going down for him. Alright. I'm gonna start moving the ship because we can't... He's alive, really... alive, alive, alive. They stopped, they stopped. Perfect. When you get lower, shoot blunders at him to bounce him off. We're out of blunders. One, one guy's in the water. I'm going to shoot myself out in a second here. No doubt it's going to warn his friends, but whatever. I see him on the in the water. I'm just going to start sailing. I way overshot this. One of them is dead. Keep an eye out for borders. Yeah. Oh, we're taking water. I can handle that in a second. Uh, border, border, border. Uh, border, yeah, so I saw. Yeah, I got, I got repairs. You watch border. I hear somebody in the water. Don't repair, don't repair. I was just getting our mess. Okay. You have someone on. That's what I'm saying. He's one. He's dead. Fire bomb. They might be running out of cannonballs. If they spam fire, they might be out of cannonballs. Don't worry about this, I got this, I got this. Just keep your eyes on the horizon. These are the kinds of encounters that I usually try to avoid. This whole spinning around each other nonsense makes a little sense when fighting a crew that outguns you. And what these fights usually come down to is who loses patience first. Brandon and I had to watch our trigger finger and not try to board them too liberally because the moment one of us goes down, it means go time for them to finish the fight. Despite the phantoms occupying the fort, I was trying to get a little creative in order to turn the tides in our favor. Though a quick sanity check to ensure that our loot was still safely stashed away wouldn't hurt. I was given a good angle to get some shots in, taking the pressure off of Brandon and turning up the heat for that brig. But the Phantoms did not like me using their equipment, which was fine by me because I had a ship to board. Well, my own ship, that is. Unimpressed by the amount of damage inflicted on their vessel, they began getting more aggressive in their boarding attempts, though all would fall to the might of my Wi-Fi blade. The fort was laying into their abandoned vessel as a result of their choice to fight us more ferociously over keeping themselves afloat. It was obvious that if this becomes a matter of patience, we'd have the upper hand, but only if we can survive their onslaught. But credit where credit is due, they were hanging on by a threat to keep themselves mobile, the constant barrage of cannon fire coming from the fort must have been draining their wood supply, and me having an unusually good day on cannon shots myself was only exacerbating that problem. The poor guys had barely any chance to even fire back, probably being occupied with repairs and such. I felt confident that we should be able to decide this battle in our favor come night time. After another double board, I knew they were desperate to end this encounter. Brandon's trusty blunderbuss had taken care of the attackers and it was now my turn to put the final nail in the coffin. I swam over to their mostly vacant vessel, but before I could even reach their ladder, they had already sunk. The burden was too heavy to bear for a single one of their crewmates to handle a ship that was getting littered in cannibals from two sides. And at last, we had outlived our enemies. They didn't have a lot of loot on their ship, but I'd be remiss to not make it my own as a sign of respect. And in the morning hours of the next day, we had cleared out the phantoms one final time to call this fortress our own. And at last, opening the gate to a vault, we were ready to bask in the glory of our rich. Chess. Oh, loot is gone. <laughs> Wait, for real? No way! 
Yes, yeah, so our foolproof plan wasn't quite as foolproof as we anticipated. As it turns out, the fight with the Brigantine took so long that we missed out on the hourly loot touching ritual that needs to be fulfilled in order to keep the fortress from swallowing it. Hey, I mean the thing is pretty big, so I'm not surprised that the taxes are substantial. But I couldn't even be mad, because at the end of the day, we came away from this whole adventure with about 175,000 gold pieces in our pockets, and a great story to boot. And if you thought that this story ended with a massive blunder, may I suggest the last episode in which absolutely everything went wrong. I've had few days as unlucky as that one, so if that sounds entertaining to you, feel free to check out the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea, and until next time, peace!